So why should you buy Bioshock Infinite? Well, first of all, they are clowns. You can kill little kids. And you can stalk women. What more could you ask for? But seriously, Bioshock Infinite is one of the best games I have ever played. And let me tell you why. First of all, Bioshock Infinite is set on Columbia, a city suspended in the air through a combination of quantum levitation and giant blimps and balloons, unlike the secret development of the underwater city of Rapture used as the settings for Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2. Now this city was originally built and launched in 1901 by the American government under President William McKinley's directive. The city was meant to symbolize the ideas of exceptionalism. On the surface, Columbia appeared to be designed as a floating world's fair that could travel across the globe. However, sometime after its launch, but before the game's events, the city was revealed to be a well-armed battleship. The city was later disavowed by the United States government and the location of the city was soon lost to everyone else. As a result of the city's isolation, a civil war eventually broke out on Colombia between different factions and citizens, each trying to seize control of the city from the powers that be. At the time of the game events, only two main factions remained. One is the Founders, the remnants of those retaining power over the city led by Zachary Hale Comstock. This is the city's ruling class which seeks to keep Colombia purely for American citizens while denying foreigners the same privileges. The other is a group named Vox Populi, Latin for Voice of the People, a ragtag resistance group led by Daisy Fitzroy opposed to the ultranationalists. Vox Populi is formed from several factions with similar ideologies that fought to seize control and restore the rights of Colombia citizenship to all. However, years of war and struggle have driven Vox Populi to fight the powers that be solely out of blind hatred, resulting in more violent and brutal methods and leading to sub-factions in the group. And now it's when it gets interesting. In addition to the internal strife, Colombia is ravaged by tears in the fabric of space and time. As with Bioshock and Bioshock 2, the player is able to locate audio logs and film projectors that will expand on the history of Colombia beyond those events occurring within the game. So there's kinda lots of room for you to get lost in this overwhelming history. Now even though the game takes place before the events of the previous two Bioshock games, occurring in 1960 and 1968 respectively, the question of whether Infinite occurred within the same timeline remains unanswered. Who's there? Who's there? Bring us the girl and wipe away the dead! What do you want? We had a deal to it! Open this door right now! Now the story is already really interesting, the plot itself, but when you get to know the characters, it gets even better. Now, we play as Booker Dewitt. Booker Dewitt is a disgraced former agent of Pinkerton National Detective Agency. As part of the 7th Cavalry Regiment, he had performed brutal acts against Native American Indians at a battle of wooden knee to defend his own honor. These acts left him emotionally scarred, leading to excessive drinking and gambling. He was subsequently dismissed for behavior beyond the acceptable bounds of the agency. He continues to work, though, as a private investigator for the New York City, referring to himself as an independent contractor. Internally, he is disturbed by both his role in the events of Wounded Knee and recurring visions of New York City under attack from the air. Booker is skeptical of faith, unwilling to accept the idea that he can be absolved of his sins by embracing religion, as he considers his sins to be extreme as to demand penance rather than forgiveness. Now, how does Booker do it fit the plot? Well, basically, he is given the mission to rescue a girl. But to do that, he needs to go to Colombia, and that's when things start to get interesting. Upon arrival, you are confronted with a beautiful, beautiful city. The art direction in this game is definitely one of the pluses. It's simply mind-blowing. You are literally living in the clouds. It's paradise. But after a while, you start realizing that things aren't working so well for Colombia. Even though on the outside they seem to be like a working, functional society, their foundations are actually really, really, really broken. And it all comes down to Father Zachary Hale Comstock, the main antagonist of the story. Claiming to have received a vision of the future for Manek Angel, Comstock became a religious fanatic who founded Columbia, where he is revered as the prophet. Comstock claims that Elizabeth is his daughter, born miraculously to his late wife, Lady Comstock, after only seven days in the womb. Seems legit, right? And she is the lamb that will lead Colombia in the future. 
he has created a religion that has Keen Levine describes as being a hybrid of Christianity and the worship of the founding fathers as religious figures. Under his leadership, Colombia has become a breeding ground of racist and sexiest attitudes, with minority groups subject to seizure of assets, false imprisonment, and penal labor, torture, and summary execution without charge. Now, from all this, it's pretty obvious that this game is pretty controversial. I mean, race, sex, religion, myth, and power. Everything about this game resolves around these things. This game is not about player choice, because you actually don't have alternate endings. But it's about the, the choices we make as human beings and the consequences it has on our life. The tiniest thing can mean the biggest change. And this is what this game is all about. The so-called butterfly effect. Now even though this game does not allow much for player choice and that you can't decide which type of ending you get, throughout the game you, you realize that there's so many things to learn, there's so many details. I mean, it, the game itself, the story, it's like a puzzle. And once you start progressing throughout the story and meeting these characters and understanding these characters and watch them, you know, interact with each other and the way that changes everything, you start to realize that it's actually a really deep story about many, many things and not just about one guy trying to rescue a girl. Speaking of girl, Elizabeth is a young woman who has been held captive in Colombia for most of her life. Who are you? My name is DeWitt. I'm a friend. I come to get you out get of here. Get away! <gasps> are you real? I'm real enough. She is shown to be intelligent, having spent most of her life studying a wide variety of subjects from geography to medicine and physics, will is acquiring more practical skills in the form of cryptography and lockpicking. She also has the ability to perceive and interact with the dimensional tears across Colombia. She wears a thimble in the place of the tip of her little finger, which has been cut off. Though she does not remember how this happened, her confinement has been maintained by Songbird, a large robotic bird-like creature who has been both her friend and her warden. You're the girl who's getting out of this tower. <laughs> Now it's pretty safe to say that if it wasn't for Elizabeth, the game would not be as good as it is. Because this character brings so much life and brings so much doubt and at the same time sense to this game that you actually you can't see Bioshock Infinite without her. Now once you finally rescue her, you will earn an ally. She definitely is one of the best AI characters that I've ever seen in any video game. Usually when you play with an AI character um, on your side, he either gets in the way, or gets shot to death, or simply does stupid things that really affect your gameplay and the overall immersion and feeling of the game. But on Bioshock Infinite, Elizabeth is actually quite the contrary. For an AI, she's really smart. She does not get in the way. Actually, she kind of helps you and always adds up for the immersion because she starts either singing or looking at some painting or helping some kid in the street or, you know, you really know that it's a live character, it doesn't seem like an AI at all. Now one of the many interesting facts about Elizabeth is that she can actually interact with the environment. For example, if there's a tear, she can open up a tear and bring something from the other side that actually can help you. For example, a med pack or ammo or even weapons or cover so that you can, you know, advance throughout the game without getting shot at. She always gives you options when you're playing. And sometimes when you're on a really desperate situation, she comes along and gives you health or gives you vigor. Or if you need money, she actually tosses you a coin every now and then. So there's always this kind of interaction. She's either helping you out or making sure you keep up with the history and the storytelling of the game. And in all honesty, some portions of the game where you don't play with her, you kind of miss her. So that's how good the character is. Speaking of good characters, we'll also find Robert and Rosalind Lutis, who are two mysterious individuals that direct Booker to Colombia and appear throughout his travels. They appear to be near identical father twins, but it is later revealed that they are the same person from two different realities, only differing in gender. Rosalind is shown to be the one to have developed the technology that keeps Colombia afloat under Comstock's orders, and through that made contact with Robert. Together they work on how to communicate with and subsequently cross between dimensions to the extent where they can now do so at will. 
Over the course of the story, it is revealed that Kamstot attempted to murder the Lutis twins by sabotaging one of their devices to protect his secrets, but instead, they ended up in a state of flux existing along the entire possibility rate. They now act as agents of reality attempting to correct imbalances without directly manipulating events. Now speaking of devices and alternate realities, Elizabeth is capable of opening, opening up small tears and bringing small objects from the other side, but that's not her full capabilities. They came up with a, with a device that actually is called the Siphon that actually hinders down her powers. She cannot use her full range of powers because of that Siphon. And why? Because if she would be able to do so, she would escape the tower, she would find a way to get out of there. Which is bad, Comstock wants her lamb to follow his footsteps so he needs to brainwash her, so that's why she's kept in captivity. So I want this review to be spoiler free, which is why I won't tell you any more details about the story, but know that you, that you can never take the ending for granted. The story, you cannot take it for granted because it will always find a way to surprise you. This is definitely one of the pluses that this game has. Another awesome element that this game has is the gameplay. The gameplay is simply mind-blowing. I've been playing first-person shooters for quite some time now and I honestly cannot remember of the game over the last 4 or 5 years that can actually compete with this one. If you are a Bioshock veteran, you will also find this game familiar. But there's something really innovative about this game, the rail system. The rail system actually connects the city and you can actually travel through them and use them to attack enemies from up above or escape a really bad situation. Now this completely turns the game around because it gives you much much more options. And that's what gameplay is all about, options. The story itself may not offer you much options in terms of uh, you know, the way the story ends, but when it comes to character creation and crafting and gameplay experience, you can literally do whatever you want to. Granted, you have the money to do so. So there's a money system in this game, and you can pick up money throughout, you know, just by looting sacks and boxes and corpses, or simply hacking um, vending machines to give you money. And Elizabeth occasionally will throw you a coin or two that will actually help you. Now, what can you do with this money system? You can actually buy uh, skills and upgrade those skills called Vigors. You can buy ammunition for the weapons and upgrades for those weapons and you can buy items to help you get better stats um, regarding your skills and abilities. Now you also use money every time you die. Well you don't actually die. Every time you get downed by the enemy Elizabeth will make sure you keep fighting but that costs you money. So the money system actually interferes with everything and you have to manage that money system in order for, for you to actually craft your character and you know don't be blocked by the lack of money. But worry not, Elizabeth will always help you with that as well. Now I play this game on the hard difficulty setting and there are three basic difficulty settings, easy, normal and hard. And apparently there's a secret one that you unlock upon finishing the game, which is called 1999 mode. Apparently it uses the old formula of first person shooters that makes this game even harder. But on the hard difficulty setting, I guarantee that you will have a perfect experience. Unlike many first person shooters that have come out recently, this game is not easy at all, but it's not impossible. When you're fighting an enemy, you never feel powerless or overpowered. It's always balanced, either by the number of enemies or the type of enemies or the amount of M1 health that the game gave you for that specific situation. You always feel cha a challenge and that's what this game is all about. Challenging you to overcome specific situations either by being a versatile player, a smart player or a really skilled player. There's room for everyone but the bottom line is that this is a really exciting and rewarding gameplay experience. You can kill enemies from afar with a sniper rifle or you can be head shooting them from medium distances because the headshots actually damage the enemy a lot. You can actually use Vigors if you are uh, one of those up close and personal players. You can bring down enemies close to you with the, the help of Vigors and completely smash their faces while giving you health at the same time. Or you can burn characters to the ground or set electricity traps or simply throwing crows at them. I mean, the possibilities are definitely endless and you can make up for different gameplay types and you can experience them within the same gameplay. You don't have to start the game from scratch and do everything different to have a different uh, type of character. You can actually equip the specific Vigors you want and the specific weapons you want for that specific situation. This really makes up for a really um, versatile gameplay experience. 
Another thing about the gameplay that's actually superb are the boss fights. I honestly haven't had any decent boss fight since probably Half-Life 1 or even Half-Life 2 and this is how good the game is. Either if you're fighting a giant robot or a weird really creepy ghost you're always gonna find the boss fights really challenging and compelling and also rewarding. That sense of accomplishment when you actually win those fights is simply awesome. Another really good thing about this game is the level design. The level design is really creative, it really pushed the boundaries of creativity because um, you used to be trapped on this underwater city, right, on Bioshock 1 and 2 and now on an open space things really needed to be different and they actually are. The level design is uh, made in a way that you can actually feel that you're not on an open world but it's not as linear as Bioshock 1 and 2. The rail system adds up for the versatility of the level design. The way the objects are placed in the map and the way that buildings are crafted actually makes for a much more immersive experience and from the gameplay point of view the level design is actually one of the things that makes it so great. The fact that Elizabeth can open up there and bring objects from the other side that completely change the way you play on that specific part of the map which is genius. Another remarkable thing about this game is the fact that if you are a veteran you will still identify this game as being a Bioshock title even though it's not underwater anymore and if uh, even though it's it happens way before the previous titles it, it it's still clearly a Bioshock title and you if you pay enough attention you will find lots of references and so maybe something even bigger than that to the previous games and to the previous realities there aren't big daddies but there are stuff that's really similar to it The little girls are not there anymore, but just take a closer look at Elizabeth. I mean, the amount of things that, the amount of hints that you find throughout the game clearly identify this as a Bioshock game. Now, don't rush throughout the game. This is another thing that it's really important. If you're gonna play this game, and I'm sure you will because it's really worth it, please don't rush the game. Take your time to appreciate everything, from the level design, to the art direction, to the audio logs, to the video logs, read the posters, just pay attention to what's happening around you, what people say. Everything about this game is so complete and it gives you so many hints that it would be a shame for you not to pay attention to those little details because even though overall this game has really awesome things, the small things also make up for the, you know, amazing experience overall. Now once you finish the game, make sure you watch the credits till the end because there's a little surprise for you there that might change the way you see the ending of the game. Now speaking of the way the game ends, it definitely leaves room for more titles. I mean, the world infinite says something right there, right? So if you are either a first person shooter veteran that is looking for a real challenge, a Bioshock fan, or a newcomer to the series, I'm absolutely sure that you will find something that you love about this game and that a few years from now you will still remember the experience you had with this game. That's the way I felt when I finished the game and I gave it like a couple of days and thought about the game a lot and I actually felt that okay this is one of those games that 10 years from now I'm still I, I will still remember some details and I will still be happy that I played that game. So doing a recap of all of the stuff we talked about, the story, the characters, the gameplay, the level design, the art direction, the AI, the ending, the possibilities, the fact that the game came out later than expected and still exceeded its expectations and it wasn't a flaw at all, quite the contrary, the fact that it still stays true to the Bioshock franchise and the fact that it leaves room for more games simply makes this game totally worth it. I hope that you share the same opinion as I do once you finish the game because this is the type of game that the gaming industry really needs. A compelling game that has a really good and solid story that actually surprises you a lot but rewards you with the awesome gameplay and lets you choose the way you want to play the game. So that's one of the things that I can't stress enough that we really need for today's games. Now I'm really curious to see what's next for the Bioshock franchise because it, honestly it's gonna be really hard to top this one but after 
playing this game I have full confidence in the developers and I only wish for one thing that this game had a multiplayer version unfortunately it doesn't have but I am positive that if they would pull this off the game would still maintain its character without f without feeling like another generic shooter and would actually revolutionize the way online first-person shooters are today anyway here's the challenge I hope that it gets somewhere down the line because I think we all deserve a good multiplayer game since we have this kick-ass single player you know that's the only thing that's missing anyway Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did, and take care. Cheers. I don't know, brothers and sisters, but this one doesn't look clean to me.